All right, so I wanted to make this video specifically because of what I'm dealing with in the marketplace right now, and that is why some listing agents are failing their sellers right now. So quick backstory, right? I am a stager by trade. I used to own my own staging company. I used to be a wedding planner for over 10 years and attention to detail is 110% super important when I represent a seller and listing their home for sale. So I have three buyers right now who are actively searching in the $650,000 range up to the $850,000 range in the Kapolei and Eva Beach area. So that's gonna get them a town home with a garage, okay? There is a lot of inventory and it's unusual to have a lot of inventory, meaning there's about 10 to 15 listings that we are all the three of these clients are considering. We are going on probably four showings a day right now between me and my teammates trying to cover for them. And we're just continually getting disappointed. And I think there's an adjustment happening in this specific marketplace in the Coppola and Eva Beach region. If the seller and the listing agent are not on the same page when it comes to what it takes to sell their property. So another unusual thing is that these properties have been on the market for 42 days, 35 days, 220 days for one of them. And they're all the same builders. They're DR Horton from 2005 back to like maybe 1998, like that range. So they're, you know, 15 years old, 15, 20 years old. And a lot of the kitchens are original, which is okay. But there's a couple of big things. There's four specific things I want to go through today on how I feel like these listing agents are not doing their due diligence and really like helping the seller sell. So let's kind of break through those. Okay. Number one is going to be cleaning. I say it time and time again, but I'm coming into these homes and they're dirty, like literally a dead cockroach in the corner and the leaves in the living room and dust just everywhere and like still mildew in the bathtubs. And this is stuff where sure it might have been cleaned, you know, a month ago when they were getting it prepared to list. And now the home is sitting on the market. And like I always say, a fresh listing is like a fresh loaf of bread. When it comes out of the oven, it's hot. It's like tasty. Everyone can smell it. They want to see it, touch it, feel it. And then after a week, it starts to get a little stale and by a month it is moldy and stank and no one wants anything to do with it. And that is what's happening to these properties. So what I'm going through and seeing is that number one, if an agent literally just came through and put eyes on their own listing property, came through with a Swiffer and a mop and just cleaned up, put an air freshener in there, night and day difference, okay? The other thing I'm seeing on a lot of these condos is original carpet with a lot of stains. So I don't know if they were previously rented out, but the seller could easily replace that carpet for as little as $5,000 and offer, you know, way quicker, or even just say, hey, we got quote for replacement of flooring. This is what it's gonna cost. We'll give you that credit if you give us an offer. Just to go above and beyond and give that thing. Just, it's not a topic of cleaning, but another thing I'm seeing on these is that some of the original townhomes don't have air conditioning. And that is a big red flag for a buyer, right? If I'm looking for a property and I'm gonna be spending 4,500 a month on my mortgage, I want split AC, you know, I want be able to move into a home and enjoy it. And I realize on the sell side, it might not feel like you need to do that, but if your property isn't selling and there's objections from the buy side, that tells me that there's something that's not clicking with the buyer right. They're not seeing the value for what they're getting. And so again, if you don't wanna actually install the, the AC yourself, get a quote, put it on the countertop and say, hey, give us a full price offer and I'll give you 10K of credits to install AC. Like done and done. But on the buy side, if I'm not seeing that, my buyer thinks, oh, that's gonna take time, that's gonna take money, I don't wanna deal with this, I'll just go to another property, and they lose out, right? Number two that I'm seeing how listing agents are failing right now is professional photos. And I don't know what this is, but for some reason, people are still not investing in a professional photographer and videographer when it comes to marketing their homes. So there is dark photos, there is small photos, there is like clutter in the photos, the shades are down, like I just don't understand it. And literally with $500, you can hire a professional photographer and get a proper shoot that's gonna look way different. Just knowing the leverage that you have with these professionals. So you can add on virtual tours like a Matterport where you can actually have an online 3D tour where you can click through and tour the home. Those are huge, especially for people who are not in state yet. If they're browsing from a distance, that's a beautiful way to show them the home instead of having them have to schedule a tour and blah, 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 blah. It's worth the extra investment. Same thing with video. I feel like video is definitely an add-on and it's not necessarily an essential depending on the home. But if your home isn't selling, 
Maybe it's time as a listing agent that you need to pay for it out of your pocket to do what it takes to sell a property. I don't know about you, but my sellers get a little bit antsy if we get past the two week mark. By the 30 day mark, it's not looking good. By the two month mark, I'm about to get fired. <laughs> so as a listing agent, I always have to make sure that I'm covering my ass, number one, making sure that my clients understand I have done everything possible to market this home for you and there's no reason that it shouldn't sell, right? Okay, so number three thing that I see is the lack of staging. I've made videos about this before, but I gotta say it time and time again, I'm just gonna assume what's happening in the marketplace. So in general, 60,000 agents have left the industry in 2023. The market adjustment has caused the people who are not doing this full time or not having success in their business to leave the industry. So what is that doing to the rest of us? Well, same thing, a lot of us, their pipelines have just crunched down. Their money is not consistent anymore as an agent. A lot of agents are hurting. And especially if you're used to the traditional kind of lead gen where you pay for leads and you convert them over six months to a year, it can be really hard. And I think a lot of listing agents are seeing um, a decline in their savings. So when they get a listing, I'm just gonna assume that they're being tighter on their budget to keep more money personally. But to me, that's a total disservice to the client. If you're not able to give the same service that you did a month ago to the client that you have today, and now all of a sudden your listing isn't selling, I don't think that it's a market issue. I think it's a presentation issue. And I say that because I've had three listings this summer and all of them have sold within two weeks for sure, like under contract within two weeks, multiple offers, usually by day four or five under contract. And so what is the difference? I am doing professional photos and video on every single one. I am staging every single one. I'm not staging every single room, but I'm staging the main living spaces. I'm also cleaning it like really good. And I'm going through with a buyer's set of eyes. If I see mildew in the tub, I will personally go there with a razor blade and remove the mildew and re the tub for you. <laughs> like no excuses because these are the feedback I hear from my clients when I go and show them. So I take that same perspective to my seller's home and I'm trying to mitigate before I'm being proactive, right? Those are some huge things. Number four on how listing agents are failing is just, I think a lack of marketing effort and skill set. So this is a hard thing that I'm gonna say, and this comes from a place of love, but if you are not an online marketer, your business is gonna suffer moving forward. If you're used to post and ghost on MLS, that method isn't working anymore. And I'm seeing it time and time again with the listings too. So versus if you are an online marketer and you have a social media presence and you have a YouTube channel and you have a newsletter going out and you have your basic MLS, you know, site IDX going out to your clients, that's five X times the amount of coverage than you're getting than the one post and ghost right? So on my side, I am teasing the property before it even becomes on the market and letting my audience know, Hey, coming soon, this property's coming to market. It's beautiful. It's staged. People want it, right? It's that hot fresh for bed. They can't wait to get in. Secondly, as soon as it hits the market, we're doing a broker's open. We're doing two open houses or three open houses the first weekend. And we are driving as much traffic as possible before the actual offer deadline. We're also canvassing the neighborhood with flyers before the open house. We're inviting all the neighbors in because you never know, maybe your neighbor has an auntie or a family member that wants to live on the same street. Get them in before everybody else can, right? And then of course that open house, we are following up, we are circling back. And then after we do the open house, we're following up with those neighbors again. We're following up with every single person that toured the home, trying to drive as much attention and as much demand as possible within seven days, okay? And that is the proven process that we use to get multiple offers in one week when the rest of listings are setting. It's awareness, you gotta have eyeballs and you gotta really create something that's eye-catching, but it's just a tease to get someone in the door. That's the strategy. So you're creating the top of the funnel and getting them into the middle to then close them at the end. And I'm just seeing this time and time and time again. And I think it's frustrating for me as a listing agent to know the perspective of the seller on the other side and the disservice that they're getting. So I just want to encourage you guys, if maybe you're a seller right now and you're not getting what you wanted out of your home, maybe there's a price adjustment we have to do. Maybe it's a presentation issue. I'm not sure, but I don't want you to see you not sell your home if you have a desire to sell because of your representation. On the flip side, if you're preparing to sell your home in the next six to 12 months, understand buyer perspective. It's really easy to think what I want and what I need and that this home is worth X, Y, Z because I feel it. But if the buyer doesn't think it's worth that, then they're not gonna offer that. And that's where we're seeing this value to price adjustment. And on these homes, I guarantee you now that they've been on the market for 30 to 45 days, that tells me as a buyer's agent, hey, I can offer 25,000 under ask and I can ask for credits because no one else has, right? I have leverage, right? So it's good for buyers, 
bad for sellers. So those are just four big things that I'm seeing and I want to share it to the masses to improve our industry as a whole. And I don't know obviously what the commission structures are like with those listing agents, but I can tell you, you get every penny when you work with us because we do all of that out of pocket for you. So I just wanna share, I have passion for you guys as listings. This is your baby, right? Your home is your baby and you don't wanna make sure that your babysitter isn't taking good care of it. So <laughs> with that, I'm gonna wrap it up guys. I'll drop my email address too. I'm always open for a Zoom call or a phone call. And I just wanna strategize with you. Even if you're working with someone and you're not happy, I'm happy to share advice on what I would do differently. And you can share that information with your agent. But I'm here to help guys as always, and I will see you next week. Bye.